What's up guys? Barbarian or Bust here with the Charge Hammer of the Ancients build. Now there is a bunch of Hammer of the Ancients builds out there already and this is definitely the strongest build. This is my version and you don't really need these uniques. You could do it without it as you can see here and I got a couple other options for you. So also if you had to Balt's Wheel, which I am still yet to have, uh, I would definitely add that. You can also add Banished Lords and the Tusk Helm. But right now, I have the Helmet of Might, and you definitely want cooldown, max life, strength, and any other open spot. You only need one piece with maximum armor, sorry, with total armor. The other pieces, wide open. And then for our chest, we have the Juggernaut. And because we are using charge, we do want brawling skill damage. And in this place, you also want max life and some resistances. And then again, like a damage reduction. And with our gloves, we have the Earth Striker. And instead of all stat, I really wish I had strength, but you still want attack speed. And of course, you definitely want four ranks of Hammer of the Ancients. Another good one would be overpower damage. And for our pants, because we are using Ring of the Ravenous, Iron Blood will proc, and we want to use Iron Blood in this. If we do not have Ring of the Ravenous, you could use Aspect of the Protector or Tibalt's Will. But either way, you still want max life, max charges to charge, <laughs> max, max, yeah, max ranks to charge, and strength and or all stats. And this would also be another place that you could put a re resistance of your choice. On the boots, we use Ghost Walkers, and my boots are pretty standard. Always movement speed with three resistances. I feel like that's the best way to put your boots. You don't want Fury Cost Reduction with Hoda, FYI. And for our weapons, on one of the weapons, you're going to want your Edge Master. And for all four weapons, you're going to want Strength, All Stat, Overpower Damage, and Damage While Berserking. This is my weapon from the uh, from the Charge Ren build. So this one has vulnerable damage. You really want overpower. And if you notice, because we're using this the red ring, I have two swords and I have two maces. That's just to balance the overpower with, with the critical strike damage. If you want another mace in here, that's absolutely fine. And on here we have Ancestral Charge and we want those four the four ancients to charge with us so that it'll bring the cooldown of charge to three seconds. And then we have the Mace of Ancestral Force. Now you definitely want this either here or on a two-hander. So I'm going to explain that in just a second. But you want it on a one-hander if you have the elements, because you want elements on a two-hander, because that's just way too powerful. But if you were going to use the, the Tusk Helm, I would put Ancestral Force on the two-hander and I would put Battle Mad on a one-hander, which would give you more Berserking. So you, after you swap weapon 10 times, you get Berserking for 3.5 seconds. Every time you charge, you get Berserking for 3 seconds. So this will definitely proc. So that is a change I would make if you're going to use this helm without elements. But if you don't, if you don't have that helm or you don't want to use it, then I would use elements on the two-hander. That 60% is really good. And in our rings, we have Ring of the Ravenous. We use this for two reasons. One, for the brawling skills, and two, for the bleed to proc... Actually, three reasons. Iron Blood. And the third reason would be so that we can still have two Earth Strikers. So first, it'll proc your mace, because you put charge on your mace, and then it'll go to rend, and it'll do either your two-handed slashing or your dual wield. So this gives two procs of Earth Striker. And then our red ring, this ring is amazing, and it's the only one to use if you're using any of those three skills. This needs no introduction. And then finally, we use the Necklace of the Iron Warrior. I love this, this neck piece. I think the Iron Warrior, if you're not using three shouts, is perfect. And it gives you literally like two shouts in one. And this is another way to proc unstoppable if we had Tibalt's Will. So with here, you want ranks of Rowling skills. I would, instead of two ranks of counteroffensive, I would much prefer uh, one of the three of, of the trifecta, like the Brute Force, Heavy Handed, or Wallop. 
but either way this is good good uh you definitely want the cooldown reduction cooldown reduction is very important and if you want to use the banish lords definitely go ahead this one is still very amazing and works very well with this build and if so i would put the necklace of the iron warrior sorry the iron warrior aspect on your pants and if you have Tobalt's will then i would put the iron warrior in your helmet so a couple ways you can change that our construct is the same so flash of adrenaline duration tactical with initiative support with tempest resource support safeguard and fortify support and then our weapon expertise is two-handed axe our skills we have two points in lunging strike which we don't use very often and then you want max points in Hammer of the Ancients into Furious Hammer of the Ancients. Then we take three points in Imposing Presence. We take two points in Rallying Cry. Three points in Iron Skin for Tactical Iron Skin. And then we max out our Charge to take Power Charge. And we max out this trifecta here with Aggressive Resistance, Battle Fervor, and Prolific Fury. And again, I love Swiftness in all my builds. Gotta love that movement speed. We take three points in Pit Fighter. These are the last two points I had in the build, so you could put these anywhere you'd like, but I think the best place for them is Slaying Strike. One point in Thick Skin to get three points in Counter Offensive. And then you take the Trifecta, max out those, Heavy Handed, Brute Force, and Wallop. And for we take Wrath of the Berserker with Supreme Wrath of the Berserker. And our key passive for this one is Unbridled Rage. For some reason, if you want to focus more on Charge and the Tusk Helm, you could swap over to Unconstrained. But it'll make your, your Hammer of the Ancients feel a little weak. So I, I would definitely suggest with going in Unbridled Rage. And with your skills, obviously your Hammer is going to be on your Bludgeoning. But with your Lunging Strike, put it on your Slashing. And then with Charge put that on your bludgeoning so what'll happen is you'll get two strike you'll get two procs of your earth striker because it'll go from bludgeoning to slashing then if you proc this that's another slashing and then you hit hammer of the ancients that's another bludgeoning so there's there's a bit of a combo that you can do and you can kind of play around with it it's really nice and for the paragon board so in our starting board we have brawl and we want that 18x brawl damage and our second board is Bone Breaker, and we put in Exploit. And we just want to get enough dexterity to proc Exploit, because we just want everything to be vulnerable to make sure we proc Wallop all the time. And our third board is Carnage with Might, so we get the bonus to damage from close and damage to Berserking. And then our fourth board, again, is Decimator. We don't take Decimator. You, you could if you wanted to. But it's, in my opinion, it's more important to take the Max Fury nodes over here. And we take Ire, and because we're kind of, like, if you, we're kind of short on points, but if you have any extra you want to move points around, like, the more points in Ire, the better off you're going to be. And then our fifth board is a Warbringer, and that's where we take Wrath. And Wrath, we specifically take this just for the Red Ring, so we proc that all the time. And again, we want all the fury nodes here i'm missing one so i could i could probably like get rid of a physical damage to bring out a max fury node and then we get them up here as well the more fury we have the stronger our hammer of the ancients is going to be so that's really important and then our final board which you can probably guess is blood rage so blood rage blood rage is awesome this node needs to be in every barbarian build it's just it's too good and in here we put crusher so we just want to get 40 strength, very easy. We don't care about the damage to bleeding enemies. The damage reduction from bleeding does work with all of our enemies because we're using the because we're using the ravenous ring, but this is like a little added bonus. All right, so that is the build overview and let's watch the build in action. All right. So tier 98, let's give it a go. Open with the charge. Open with another charge. And then finish him with the hammer. If you need to. So this is definitely this is really powerful. And it's it's a lot of fun as well. Of 
Grab all the loot. Could be something good. So yeah, this this is really fun. And again, with how I have it set up, like you're guaranteed to just crush everything. I don't really count my overpower procs. I don't really worry about them. I actually don't even worry about my red ring procs either. I just I just smash everything. And then I use uh Wrath of the Berserker whenever. But it's definitely like a really easy gameplay. I would say this will probably be what might be best in the gauntlet. That, that's my opinion, because everything will be close to you, and then you'll be able to pick up those little, what, proofs of might or something? So, with a bleed build to have everything bleed out, I can't see that really working very well. And with upheaval, I feel like things will just be far away and you'll have to spend extra time picking them up, where with this, everything's right in front of you. So you can just kind of keep mowing things down. That five seconds of proc the red ring, I really think that's kind of lame. I feel like if you kind of earned it, you should. they should just let you keep it, really. But that's my opinion. But yeah, super strong build. Barbarians, well, Barbarians still always awesome, really. There has, they haven't really had a bad season so far. I just hope they get more build, like, diversity going. This is a very good start with build, build diversity. I feel like the charge meta has really opened things up. Like, upheaval's better. Like, if you want to play a pure bleed build, that's maybe not as good this season. There's some different options, but... Overall, using charges is, is pretty cool. And hopefully they kind of make more options. I kind of hope they showed, like, the weapon mastery skills a little bit of love. Because I feel like... Hoda is so strong. The only way Deathblow could compete is is with the Overkill Mace, and not everyone has the Overkill Mace. But the core skills are clearly well, core skills. <laughs> I kind of hope Rand gets some more love sometime. I mean, one can hope. Brawling skills got love, so well, charge did. And if for some reason, if you're low on fury, proc your your rallying cry. And again, if we had Tibalt's will, I would love to use that in this build because it's just a no-brainer. There's like you have three separate ways to proc unstoppable, so you'll be unstoppable and have like max fury all the time. So, I, I need to do more Durial runs. In all honesty, I've only done like, I don't know, I think about 20? I haven't been in like a Durial rotation. I just farmed him a couple times here and there. But that would help me if I could literally grind Durial for like 100 times in a row. And when you're playing this, make sure that you do hit your lunging strike at least once, once in a while. But yeah, this build is definitely an easy way to play. Definitely could add some awesome uniques to it. 
But if you don't have any, it, it can do all the content, so don't worry about that. And with the Paragon board, if you wanted, you could put Dominate in there for more overpower damage. Um, especially if you're going to use the, the Banished Lord's Talisman. You might want to consider that. Alright, almost done here. But yeah, Hammer of the Ancients is still the best build, like, no matter how you try it, like, it doesn't, it's just too good. It really is too good. I don't know if it'll ever not be the best build, really. I mean, also, that's kind of like the signature barbarian build, you know? So, I'm, I'm definitely not, not mad about it, that's for sure. I kind of hope Spin to Win comes back. I played Spin to Win all DLC. Like, that was my favorite build. And I haven't even tried it yet. I haven't even tried to make a whirlwind build. I haven't been interested, actually. Surprisingly. But Spin to Win was definitely fun. Anyway, that is the Hammer of the Ancients build, and there's probably a lot of Hammer Ancients builds. This might be very similar to all of them, I have no idea. I actually haven't looked. But, yeah, always very powerful, always one of the top builds. This is my version of it. This will probably be the best one for the, um, the Gauntlet. This is the one I will probably use in the gauntlet, unless with the mid-season update, if they decide to do something wonky with like nerfing Barb, then I'll, I, I might consider using something else. But anyway, that's the build. Give it a try. And if you like it, please like and subscribe. All right, guys. Thanks. And I'll see you in the next one.